I'm bringing my dog with me across the country to the mountains of Colorado to live in this teardrop camper for a month. Hi, my name is Mike, and I just bought this slightly used 2021 Jeep Willys. The plan is to drive it 1,421 miles across the country to the state of Colorado, and then use it to explore the mountains. As you're about to see, things don't always go according to plan. I'm here with my buddy Joe. We just finished the gig. This is the night before I'm headed to Colorado. I'm leaving first thing in the morning, and Joe's the last person I'm going to see. I'm the last human being yeah. that he will see until we hear from him. Yep. So, uh, be safe, my brother. I appreciate it, man. Fun. I'm looking forward to getting away from everybody. I'm sure you except are. Except you. I'm sure you are. You're going to come back looking crazy, and I can't wait. Hopefully, skinnier. <laughs> Alright, love you, bro. Love you. Okay, this is it. We're pulling away for a month. This is our home. about five after six. We crossed through Columbus about 20 minutes ago. That was the first major city of the trip, so that's a good first milestone. It's getting pretty late in the day and I still don't know where we're going to sleep tonight. So we're gonna pull over at the next rest area and uh, stretch our legs a little bit and figure that out. I was feeling very happy about finding a sheets and this sunset. And it was at about this time when problems began. My engine had a check engine light. There isn't very much we can do about it tonight. I found an alpaca farm nearby and this is where we're gonna stay overnight. The engine trouble will have to wait until tomorrow morning. Welcome to morning one of the big trip to Colorado. We're here at Hold Fast Farms. It's an alpaca farm just outside of Dayton, Ohio. This is a Harvest Host. If you're not familiar with what Harvest Host is, it's basically a subscription you can join through an app where you can 
find farms, wineries, breweries that will let you camp on their property for free. They usually ask for some kind of donation or supporting their business. In this case, they have a little shop where they sell a pack of products. Uh, I bought an alpaca blanket. It's just pretty cool to be here and see all the animals. It's a unique experience and it's already been very <laughs> eventful. I have a broken Jeep. I noticed we were losing power, gas mileage dropped way down, and I could feel the engine vibrating a little bit. The local dealer here is only 15 minutes away. Let's see if I can get the Jeep in today and get it fixed. It should still be covered under the warranty. The Jeep only has 28,000 miles on it. That's a little frustrating, uh, but I'm glad the problem happened now and I can take care of it and I won't have to deal with it the rest of the time. So we got a late start yesterday. I wanted to leave at six in the morning. We didn't get on the road until 2.30 in the afternoon, but we're having a nice relaxed time and I'm excited to see what's in store. So I'm gonna call the Jeep dealership. Stay tuned, I'll keep you posted on how that goes. There's no way I can drive any further with the Jeep in this condition. In fact, when we pulled in here, the carbon monoxide detector was going off inside the camper because of the fumes. The fumes are really bad right now. Three hours later. Well, just finished at the dealership. They said it was just a software update. Uh, O2 sensor was misreading and they updated the software on the ECU. Supposedly that took care of the problem. They drove it. Everything seems okay, so we'll see. Fingers crossed. At least we can continue down the road now. We're pulling out and it's 1.25 in the afternoon. Um, but at least we have a fixed Jeep. All right, let's hit the road. on day two and we officially crossed into Illinois. We are just east of St. Louis. In the interest of keeping it frugal and boondocking, Cracker Barrel it is. That's where we're headed now. Good morning, morning two. We're behind Cracker Barrel. That's where we slept last night. Got a beautiful sunrise this morning. We had a couple of nice thunderstorms last night. First one I slept through for the most part. Second one woke me up. It's starting to feel like an adventure here. The plan today is to put on miles, as many miles as we can. I want to make it at least to the end of Kansas today. All right, let's get this day started. This fantastic fan didn't quite do the job in the warm, muggy weather last night. So I came up with this hack. This little fan hangs perfectly on the handles to these cabinets, just like this. There it is, voila. And now I have the fan pointing straight down towards me where I sleep. And I have it plugged in over on the jackery. I pulled over at a rest stop and met a nice gentleman who had a vehicle I'd never seen before. 
The Mahindra Roxor. This is a uh, diesel. Uh-huh. 2.5 diesel. It's a... Uh, it is sold by the Mahindra people who normally make farm implements. Uh, it is sold as an off-the-road vehicle. So what year is this? Wow. It's got a very retro look to it. Oh, it does. Yeah. It, yeah, that looks like something from the Korean War. It, yeah, with the, with the top off, yeah, it does. Yeah. Every state I've been in and I've driven it, it nobody's ever bothered me. Other than guys between your age and mine, going to say, man, what is that? Can I take pictures of it? Yeah, that's cool. Wow. This bug is my inspiration. I just hope to inspire you. Oh, you have inspired us. Juniper, I think I have an extra special treat for you. We found ourselves an off-leash dog park. How cool is this, Junipup? Ozark land looks interesting. The sign says road trip tradition, so how can I pass that up? to that. That's the carbon monoxide detector because the Jeep is acting up again with the same problem. I took it to a dealer right off of the highway. Thankfully, this RV park was very close. There, there's something definitely wrong, more than just a computer reboot. It ran fine all day for 500 miles, and then it happened again. It's not looking good. Well, this sucks. I have a broken Jeep. Second time already in three days. Hopefully this dealer will fix the actual problem. They think it's a fuel injection issue. On the bright side, I'll have a air conditioner again tonight and I'll take a shower. And there's a dog friendly brewery that we're going to go to right now. I think I'm going to have several. Okay, so we just left the Jeep dealership, dealership number two of the trip. The Jeep is back on the road. The problem was that the valve cover gasket was leaking and oil was dripping onto the O2 sensor. So they fixed the gasket, they cleaned up the O2 sensor, but they don't have the part to replace it. They weren't going to be able to get it for five days. So. They graciously offered to clean the O2 sensor the best they could and put it back in. Although it is corrupt now since it is malfunctioned and they can't guarantee that it's going to work. So this is the place that helped me. Reed, Jeep, Chrysler Dodge, 
in Merriam, Kansas, right outside of Kansas City. And Stan the Man, he was very, very helpful, explained everything to me very clearly. Um, he did all the paperwork so that if I roll into another Jeep dealership, they'll know exactly what's going on and what to do. Fantastic service, one of the best dealerships I've ever dealt with, and I appreciate it, thanks. I've lost an entire day dealing with this Jeep. By the time I go and break camp, hit the road, find somewhere to stay tonight, you know, I'm better off just getting an early start in the morning. So we should be in Colorado by now, and I still have at least another day and a half of driving. We will see how it goes. Stay tuned. Okay, it's time for a burger and a beer. Okay, check engine light is on again. I am about to visit my third dealer in four days to try to get this Jeep fixed. The sensor went bad again. If this doesn't get fixed today on this stop, I'm trading this Jeep in at the next dealership I come across. I'm done, I am done. If you're gonna be stranded in Kansas, it could be worse than this. This is the end of day five. We should have been in the Rocky Mountains two days ago. We lost two days because of that Jeep and the O2 sensor issues. It runs, but it doesn't run well. And there's no way I'm taking it into the back country in its current state. So I'm going to say goodnight for now. Tomorrow morning, I'll give you a full breakdown of what's happening with the Jeep and we'll get into some details. So stay tuned. I'll see you in the morning. Okay, so here's where we are with the Jeep. The dealership here in Topeka told me that I have three bad O2 sensors, not just one. And they had scratch that they didn't have any of the o2 sensors at their dealership they found one of them at another dealership nearby they told me that the other two o2 sensors would take five days to get here they told me that on friday which means if i had to wait five days i would have been stranded here until the following friday that's a full additional week on top of the four days that i well one week plus two days so nine ten days whatever out of the month that i took off of work to do this trip 10 days is not acceptable even this much is not acceptable to me so i told them i would do some research i went on ebay myself found the parts on ebay ordered them confirmed with their parts department with their service department that those were the correct parts that I ordered. I ordered them by the part number and they're going to be here overnight um, on the following Monday, which at this point is tomorrow. In my personal opinion, this was a complete failure on, on Jeep's part to service their customer with a Jeep that's still under warranty, a vehicle that I bought intending to rely on it for what it was supposedly built for. I, I wanted to take this in the mountains and I can't even make it through the Great Plains. <laughs> it's almost laughable and whatever. I'm here, I'm making the best of the situation and life goes on.
pulling out of John Hoffer Jeep here in Topeka, Kansas in a vehicle that is finally fixed. I just really appreciated the hospitality here. Um, I was having pretty sour grapes over the weekend and the mechanic is confident that the Jeep is fixed finally and I feel pretty comfortable now. So I'm just excited to get out to Colorado. We're gonna go back to the campground and leave in the rain today, drive across Kansas. All right, adventure is on. Peace out, Lake Shawnee. It's been real. Quick love stop to get an energy drink. Kansas is long, flat, kind of boring. No offense to any Kansas people, but on the good side, the Jeep is running well. We've already made it a bit further than we did between the last two dealerships the last time we broke down. So I think this problem is licked and quite pleased about that. What do you think, Juniper? Ready to stretch your legs? Okay. After a very long day of driving, we spent a very relaxing night at Bailey Ranch. It's a harvest host a half an hour east of Colorado Springs. It's taken us seven days to get this far. Without vehicle problems, this would have only taken us three days. After what seemed like an eternity, 
we are finally at the front range of the Rocky Mountains. It is so nice to finally be camping in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado. This view of Pikes Peak can be seen right outside of our camp. The following morning, Juniper found the perfect spot to lounge around and watch the locals doing their morning routine. It's been a relaxing day two at camp here, day two in the Rocky Mountains. We arrived yesterday and uh, there's a view of our campsite. I'm only here for two nights. Um, yesterday I was very tired from all the driving and everything and it was just, the, most of the day was spent resting. But then yesterday afternoon I did do a little bit of reconnaissance and checked out some of the jeep trails around here in the area and there's some really cool stuff we're going to try to get in a few miles before the rain comes they're forecasting thunderstorms and we already heard a couple of thunderclaps but i'm seeing some blue sky in the area um, okay so if we look under the jeep next to the front tire this what I'm pointing to is the end link for the sway bar, which is connected here. And it's actually an anti-sway bar for the highway because when you're traveling at highway speeds, you want stiffer suspension. And when you're off-road, you want more travel in the suspension. So by disconnecting this link, we will get more travel out of the suspension and that will result in better traction and it will keep all four wheels on the ground, hopefully. So we're just going to use an 18 millimeter socket and a box wrench to disconnect the end link. Okay, 
that's one side and then we can push this end link up out of the way we'll put a cable tie around that to hold it and we just have to do the same thing to the other side and right here we have the end link strapped to the uh, sway bar it's also a good idea to air down your tires when you're driving off-road today i'm airing down to 20 pounds but if you're on more extreme terrain you can air down to 15 or even 10 pounds Jeep's getting dirty. Well, it's been a really nice stay here at Southern Meadows. This is in the Pike National Forest and um, it's a cozy campground. Plenty of space between campsites and it's in a nice little pine forest. Uh, the vault toilets are clean. It's right outside of town. And if you're in the Pike Wilderness area, I highly recommend this camp. Um, and it's just minutes away from Pikes Peak and all those off-road trails we were on. So today we're going to head further west into the Collegiate Mountains uh, out near Buena Vista. There's some 14,000 foot peaks out there. We may do some hiking. I'm starting to feel a little more acclimated to the altitude. And my only concern is the weather. We're supposed to get a bunch of rain and that may affect my ability to gather power from solar, uh, from the solar panels. So anyway, we're gonna get this thing hitched up and hit the road. Later on, we arrived at the four mile area. And with a stroke of amazing luck, I found this incredible campsite with million dollar views. You might wonder how much it costs to camp here. This is on BLM land. Bureau of Land Management. The cost is free.
I could hang out at this awesome camp all day, but those snowy peaks over there look amazing and I just, I need to go to them. So that's what we're gonna do now. I have a specific one in mind. Um, there might be a trail that leads all the way to the top, like right below the, the peak. We might be able to get to the top of a 14er today. That's the goal. So we're heading out. I was on my way to tackle a 14,000 foot mountain peak, driving on snowy shelf roads with four to 5,000 foot drops in my bone stock Jeep. In the back of my mind, I'm a little nervous having never done this before. I didn't know what to expect. This is the road. Oh man, I don't know about this. This turned out to be a lot more intense than I thought it would be. You only live once. You make it? I think I'm good. Thanks. Earlier on the trail, I passed a hiker who recommended that I turn around at this water crossing because beyond this point, things get really steep and I'm definitely going to run into snow on the trail. I'm going for it. I mean, what's the worst that can happen, right? And we're going to go on a hike. Come on. All right, now we're twice. Through here? Yeah, I think this is 
this is how we gotta go. Well, it's getting into mid to late September and this Colorado sun is no joke. So this area of the Rocky Mountains is considered high desert which I didn't even realize that until recently. It's about 70 degrees. I'm sweating a little bit, but the sweat is just evaporating. The air is so dry. Give me one drink. You gotta be thirsty. Here. I'm just kidding. And I see the road over there. And then we're road walking back in the sun. About a mile or so. We can do it. We only have about half a mile left. Ooh, got a cramp. Oh look, there's that view again. Ooh. All right, we made it back to the campsite. And I'm gonna show you this walk coming up here to show you how tucked in it is. We're on an off road. And you can't even see our campsite unless you actually come up here. It's a dead end. And there's the camper tucked away behind, so it's very, very private. It's the campsite lottery winner. <laughs> 10 out of 10. We can't stay here, we gotta go. Come on, let's go. No, we're not going in there. Juniper, we're going, you can't ride in there. I'm sorry. She does not like the Jeep. And she knows it's time to go. And that's why she's hiding in the corner. Come on, let's go. I'm sorry, Pop. Come on. No, come on. We gotta go in the Jeep. Come on. Come on, Pop. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's go. Come on. I know you don't like it. Well, we've been 
here at Mount Princeton RV Park for the last yesterday afternoon and last night and today I took care of a bunch of laundry and just catching up on cleaning got a fresh shower and that was a beautiful thing I figured out that it had been an entire week since I had a proper shower <laughs> so that's taken care of and now we're off to check out an actual ghost town and we're gonna traverse Tin Cup Pass if the weather holds out for us so let's do it This is crazy. There's a squirrel right here. Yeah. Oh, there is. Hi, buddy. Oh. That one was running around you. It's in the racetrack. All right, boys. Did somebody run by the Yeah, yeah. Now it's time to head over to Lake City. Driving off-road is a lot of fun, but even on pavement, when you're driving through Colorado, you're surrounded by amazing views everywhere you look. I really, really do love this state. Thank you. 
Well, today is morning 15 of the great Colorado adventure, and this is it. Today we are hitting the Alpine Trail. This is the apex of the trip. The reason I want to come out here, one of the most scenic mountain roads in the United States. We're doing it now. All right, we'll see you up in the mountains. Animus Forks is a ghost town at 11,200 feet above sea level. There are several original buildings that still remain. By 1876, Animus Forks was a bustling mining community. At that time, there were 30 cabins, a hotel, a saloon, a post office, and a general store. By 1910, most of the mining had stopped in the area. Animus Forks was a ghost town by the 1920s.
Now I begin the ascent to Engineer Pass. At the top, my adventure will change dramatically. <laughs> it was at this overlook on the top of Engineer Pass where I met some really cool new friends. They had an extra two-way radio which they handed to me and off we went. And let me tell you, it's a lot more fun and it's safer wheeling with friends than it is wheeling solo. Okay, here we go.
following day will be my last day in the San Juan Mountains. So I decided to meet up with my friends for one last trip over Cinnamon Pass and then have lunch at Animus Forks. During lunch, we noticed that the team of horses we passed earlier had caught up to us and were coming down the mountain. That was a pretty cool sight. We said our goodbyes, but I have a feeling I'll be seeing these guys again soon. Now I get to turn around and enjoy Cinnamon Pass from the opposite direction and return to Lake City. This offers a whole new set of views and a whole different perspective. cruise past Lake San Cristobal, enjoying the comfort of this relatively smooth dirt road after being tossed around for the last two days, I reflect on the majesty that I experienced over these last few weeks. It was much more than just the scenery. It was overcoming the challenges of a broken Jeep on the way here. It was making friends with very kind and like-minded people everywhere I went. It was overcoming my nerves and putting my off-road driving skills and my Jeep to the test on these challenging roads. Most of all, it was being immersed in the beautiful, exotic, and wild landscape of the Colorado Rockies and experiencing just a taste of what it has to offer. If you've made it this far in the video, I just want to extend a sincere thank you. It really does mean a lot. I've recently made some major changes in my life which will allow me to focus on YouTube creation on a more consistent basis. If you would like to do more to support the channel, I have some links in the description below. The last thing I want to show you in this video is this road that I took out of the mountains. This is Colorado Route 10. It is 70 miles of nothing, literally nothing. And as striking and beautiful as the Rocky Mountains are, this road is just as striking for the opposite reasons. As this video is ending, just take a moment to appreciate the nothingness of this road. It really is a sight to behold. We'll see you again nowhere soon.